Hi and welcome to Draw Plans. I'm Tom Norris and for today's tutorial we're going to take a look at how we do a measured survey. Uh, the property you're looking at here on screen is um, that's a five bedroom property that we're going to add a side extension but possibly two storey and a rear extension on the back. In fact it'll be a wraparound extension and uh, you could call it garage conversion but I know we're going to build up substantially here. Now, of course when you do something like a wraparound you tend to change the layout of the property completely. Um, so this particular project as I say I thought it might be a useful one for um, expressing how we do our measured survey. Uh, so initially what we do is we go on site and then uh, obviously you meet the client, you sit down, you have your consultation, uh, you basically they tell you about their homes and dreams and uh, hopefully you can establish a little bit of rapport and um, you know basically quiz them uh, in, a, in a way as much as possible to find out where their aspirations are because you're trying to pick up an idea of the style and um, you know it's 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 one of those things that you're going to develop uh, over the years that kind of experience of entering someone's property and being able to use your eyes to see what it's like inside and you know start to get a feel of the people in there look at the furniture you know how it's been furnished find out how long they've been there let them tell you about the property and what they've done and so on but it's important to develop a reasonable understanding of who they are and what it, you know what their ambitions are for the property so obviously you're going to do a, a measured survey and for the measured survey you're going to go all over that all over the property and measure it out and we're going to show you in a moment what we do but we also take loads and loads of photographs and the photographs are hugely important because there might be little gaps uh, in information from the measured survey and the notes that we take because we're effectively sketching it out but it's done very quickly and not every little thing is measured. Uh, you measure what is essential and then you fill in the gaps through the photographs and the bits and pieces. If you were to measure absolutely every detail, you'd be there for a day, you know. And generally speaking, we've got about an hour and a half, two hours uh, tops really for a measured survey. So we got to get in and out, but get the information we need. Uh, and also, you know, we lose quite a bit of time to the client. Um, so let me let me show you what happened on on this particular project um so i'm going to move that screen incidentally this is a google maps picture and sometimes we use these as a starting point uh it's useful to have one or two in the folder but um what we do is we take loads and loads of photos so here i've got the actual photos and <clears throat> i've put them into a program called faststone so we can have a little look. Let's go back and have a little look at Faststone. Uh, v S T. Now Faststone is uh, it's it's a free software, and we use this one uh, for the photographs. So it doesn't cost us anything, and it's a download. So it's a, I'm going to give you the link in the description for this. Uh, uh, video, so you'll be able to find the link. But definitely explore. We don't get. <clears throat> anything for promoting it but I've been using this uh, particular software for oh I'd say about 15 years so uh, it's, it's absolutely ideal for what we do I'm going to give you an idea in a moment uh, but here are the photographs from this particular job now as you can see from the sizes here they're pretty uh, decent photos as in the pretty 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 high quality and taken with some good kit um, you can uh, you can see all the detail you need from the photographs. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so we wander around the house. Now we're looking at, sorry, what I'm looking at is the interior. And of course we take photographs on the outside, but of the essential bits. So I'm going to walk you through in a few moments to get with a bit more detail as to what we're actually looking for within the photographs and which... Uh, these are this is the information we kind of need to have uh, 
But generally speaking, let me tell you a little bit more about the software first. So if, if you take photographs, you know, high definition, big photographs, then they're going to be chunky on your computer and they're going to take a little bit of time to work on. So what we always do is we create a second set at a lower resolution. So for example, this is what we call a 1280. Um, so basically the 1280 is, as a 1280 folder, it has all of the same photographs, but at a lower resolution. And I'm going to show you roughly, uh, I'm going to show you quickly how we do that. So I'm going to show you, how, basically I'm going to show you how quick, how good the software is. So if we grab all the photographs, um, um, <clears throat> what have we got? We've got a hundred photographs for this particular project. So if I grab all the photographs and I go to tools and I go to batch convert, <clears throat> in here now I can create another folder. I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to go media. I'm going to create a new folder, uh, 1280-2. Uh, there we go. And I've already set this. I've used the advanced features to select uh, a resize of the photos for 1280 in width. So, and then I've selected a rename. And for that, I'll let, I'll let, I'll let the system work on it. But if I, sometimes I'll put a client reference in there. <coughs> Sorry, I'm very croaky this morning, but um, getting over it. And then I just click on convert. So now the computer will convert 100 images to a lower resolution. Uh, I've selected 1280 so all the photographs will be 1280 and they're going to be in this folder over here on my left. Now you can see it doesn't take long to do uh, but it's much easier to work on lower grade photos uh, than it would be on chunky ones if your computer isn't up to it. Now don't forget you're going to be taken if you do say uh, two or three surveys a week uh, you do, you know, 50 surveys a year. It's 150 surveys, as an example, um, times 100 photos. So you're getting the idea. So these things uh, do all add up. So now what happens is on these photographs, we can flip through them much quicker than we would do on the heavy duty jobs. So when it comes to taking the actual photos, like on this particular project, I seem to have... <coughs> started taking photographs on the top floor well what on the, the reason that that's occurred is that what i do is i start off uh, with the measurement notes i start on the ground floor and work my way up and by the time i get to the top i've done the basically the layout plans i've sketched out the layout plans for the entire property and then what I do is I photograph my way down and then outside. So here we are at the top. So when it comes to in, in any room, what I tend to do is I shoot one photo from as high up as possible, just inside the door. And I try to take as many angles as possible. Like here now, I picked up on the radiator, this cupboard and the window. Uh, the Velux window and of course this line here. It's obviously the front elevation. This is the eaves. This is the loft conversion by the way. You can see access because you won't remember. You, you wouldn't, couldn't possibly remember and I wouldn't put these notes. I wouldn't put those notes into the actual uh, notes that I've taken. All I would have on this would be the height and the measurements, the width and uh, length etc. Um, but I wouldn't bother placing the windows uh, and measuring out where the windows are. Uh, not, it's not important that I do that uh, uh, because we're going to be working downstairs. But I'm trying to get an illustration or a plan together of the actual uh, layout. So what we do is we uh, do a quick measure up on upstairs. Um, downstairs, no, this is in the same room, uh, so I'm showing the door, and that'll tell me which direction the door opens. It'll show me this distance here, uh, as it does, so it gives me better placement for the Velux window. So again, I'm showing that I've got two windows, and I remember taking this photo particularly to show me the two windows, so that I've got uh, an indication of the location, and they can relate to this cupboard door, etc. 
<coughs> again I'm showing uh, the doorway this is the photo taken from the inside of the room so now I'm absolutely certain on the doorway but also the thickness of the wall you can see my notepad I left on the stairs so again I like to try to pick up a few elements within the landing uh, this is the back this is the back room now so what I'm what I'm concerned with here is picking up the corner and the window so that way I could estimate quite reasonably um, what the actual uh, width of the window is and because you know you can look at it it's that's about 900 mil and here this one you say well that's about 1200 mil and you can look at the height as well so I've got the height of the window the width of the window and of course uh, placement this side of again I've done it uh, to get to confirm placement again I've done the threshold going into the bathroom uh, <coughs> trying to again get an idea of where everything is placed within the room uh, so and then I go back into the room I've got the door opening it's also confirming the entrance to the other rooms and which way the doors are are going so here now it's important you can see my notes uh, nothing special about that second floor you got the ceiling height measured in I've got the rooms done separately uh, rather than combined um, so <coughs> now I'm going down so on on um, let me get this right so yeah that's fine I'm now heading down let's get heading down picked up on the window here so what I'm looking at is the this distance here I know I know the size of the window roughly I think it's measured into the uh, plan uh, so now I can see the stairs how that's formed I can count the steps half landing quarter landing I know exactly how it works I always take this measurement from the center of the newel post to the walls uh, that's in the uh, notes so now again you can't take uh, you can never take too many photos so you know just let the camera work away uh, you get down it's important to know how the bulkhead here the bulkhead uh, not the bulkhead well the bull nose step works into the newel post so that's that's always nice to get that represented accurately in the plan so now i'm on the first floor landing again i'm mindful of the thresholds uh, and the door the direction of doors now what what will happen here is that in some houses you'll find oh that's irregular because this is extra wide which leads you to think oh uh, why is that and of course it could be a supporting wall but in in this particular house in this particular case i know exactly where the supporting walls are or where the structural elements are within the property um, and that's through you know 40 years or 35 years of experience so now uh, as i move around i'm in the bathroom on the ground floor again i can see there's two windows here i'm trying to place which i've done okay because that's the corner you got one window in the corner and i can uh, place them reasonably accurately height wise and width wise and again i've gone into the shower and i've taken one through the screen of the the, the entrance okay into one of the bedrooms i'm not quite sure I get, i've got a corner here but uh, you got a chimney as well so this will be a back bedroom uh, window on my right <coughs> taking the picture from inside i've got the door direction and i've also got the window um, i can see the style of the window so i've got no problem and again i've got i can i can assess or i can measure that that's about 600 average wardrobe is about five this one is substandard but the average is about uh, 600 uh, so this one's a little bit less but again it helps uh, to know these things uh, to get the placement of the windows and likewise on this side the other alcove is filled up you know it's about 350 on the alcove you know it's about another so it's about 7 750 to the this side of the window so again it's not hard to work out um, we're in an, in the front bedroom now alcoves and we're seeing that there's a there, there's a bay window you can see how the direction of the door is in the corner uh, out onto the stairs 
Uh, I didn't do the box room. I didn't need to. The lady was sitting in there on her computer and uh, I wouldn't want it uh, photographed that, but it's sketched out, so I'm okay. Um, again, make sure you know where your bull nose is. Make sure you get these bits in. And it's always better to take them at the f at floor level so you can accurately demonstrate uh, on the plans uh, where you are. So I'm going down, um, heading straight down. Picked up on the window there where it is. This is the bulkhead. This one swirls around, so I should have a photograph or two of that. Um, yeah, there we go. So I know exactly how it swirls around. And it's always important to get the positioning of the door and this particular step. I always take that particular measurement uh, from the front wall here to the step so that I can position the staircase. And as I say, always in my case, I measure from the center of the newel post uh, to get, so that again, I can uh, accurately depict the width of the stairs, etc. So now I'm taking photographs looking back up and I'm picking up on the, you know, there's a ground floor, there's an understairs WC, there's a little uh, indent here before you enter into the kitchen, that's the front room. <coughs> the design of the bulkhead is always important to pick up on, so we need that. Uh, so now I'm seeing this area again. Entering into the front lounge, I got the alcoves, chimney, um, checking the threshold. And again, you can see the emphasis on the blue bags, which I'm protecting the client's furniture and carpets, etc. So you're getting a decent idea of what the um, the room looks like. Now, don't forget, I've been in this room, I've taken notes and I've done all the measurements already. So it would be an absolute dream. Uh, to you know to map it out to do the to lay out plans again uh, taken measurements everywhere and photograph this is the little loo downstairs so I can see how it's made up I've got the sizing and now I've got the sink and the loo etc that's lovely on the need to stairs uh, got electric and we've got uh, a smart meter for the electric <coughs> Uh, and this is important to get this in here to have detailed um, have a few decent photos again I'm looking at where the door lining meets the floor that's always important so I'm getting the door direction thickness of the walls etc I'm now in the back room alcove chimney breast um, alcove again I'm seeing the distance from the corner to these bifold doors. I'm seeing the width of the bifold doors, relationship to the ceiling. I'm now looking into the kitchen and they've got a little build on. They've built into the garage here and they've created a little cupboard. Uh, basically there's a boiler in there and there's a few other bits and pieces. Uh, it's, it's not good design, I can tell you that <laughs> immediately. Um, again, I'm looking at things now from different angles. Oh, I'll shoot. I'll shoot from every direction. This is in the little cupboard. <clears throat> looking back, they've got a breakfast bar here. Uh, yeah, it really is poor design, uh, the way they've done it and the use of space. So uh, the wall, this would have been a separate kitchen in the old days with the door entrance coming from the hallway. This wall was removed. So they've got a little beam going across there. Um, right, so now, uh, that's about it internally. I've taken most of the uh, photographs that I need and um, now it's time to take a look around outside. So as I go out, now, it's, now basically I don't have to sketch these in. Uh, if, I, or if I do, I'll be sketching them in, you know, uh, <laughs> not with any great accuracy or detail simply because it's all been ripped out and it's irrelevant uh, so I'll do I'll, I may well do it but um, it'll be very basic um, so looking at the various heights so it's not really important for me here to get any great information other than the building itself 
because uh, all the decking is coming out. I'm mindful of the heights. Uh, that is one thing I'm mindful because it's uh, the garden is running, um, you say, right to left downhill, and it's also running from the back to here to the back of the house downhill. So if you actually kept coming here, you're going to hit the the ground levels quite quickly. Um, right, you can see the loft. You can see the placement of all, all the windows. So you can work things out. Uh, when you look at these photographs and then compare with the other photographs of the inside and the measurement notes, you've got no difficulty mapping this house out. Uh, the little door, so the little uh, extension that they've done from the kitchen went through and they've got a small little area there and then you actually go in go in the back here as well. Uh, you also get, the, you want this measurement, you know, between the buildings and the perimeter always important to get that and if it's all skewed as in you know at an angle don't be too concerned just take that measurement and maybe take a measurement at the front and then you can work it out don't forget you've got location plans you're going to be looking at which will give you an idea of the skew of the property and that'll help you as well to come to a reasonable conclusion um, yes they did the loft uh, mansard went right to the end um, not very pretty, but I mean, absolutely fine. And it works very good upstairs. Two bedrooms and a little bathroom. Um, when you're in the back of the property taking photographs, you should always take photographs of the neighboring properties from the back, simply because the planners will ask you for them. If you don't have them, you're going to have to send a client up the garden to do it, or you'll have to go back. So as you can see, I've taken photographs of both neighboring properties. Because what they're what the planners are trying to do is establish context, and uh, sometimes they're a bit lazy to come down and take these photographs themselves, so they ask for photographs. Um, next, then you have to look at things. If you can find manholes and drainage, it's important to place them. Um, this is to do with height levels. Uh, getting an idea on the alleyway here, because we don't have side elevation photos from any great distance. Um, looking at drainage here, there isn't any uh, in the sense that you have it from the roof, but it's not going anywhere. Um, yeah, so random photographs just to get the info. We're looking at the manhole there, looking at drainage, the little gully in the corner, looking at drainage here. And of course, drainage from the bathroom, which is never very, uh, and the loft is never very pretty, but um, there we go. Right, so now we're back at the front, getting the overall slant here. You see, you can work out the drop here by just looking at the bricks. Uh, you can see if a brick is, uh, say, 80 mil, uh, then you're looking at this brick coming along here about there. So you can generally work out what the fall is uh, when you do, uh, uh, when you take photographs like that. Um, Okay, so what are we looking at? We've got the general idea, so um, I don't need to go to the other side of the street to photograph. I picked up a few photographs on Google. So uh, what I'm looking at here now is uh, no manholes or anything. I'm generally just getting photographs from a few different angles. I'm interested in th this particular cracking here in the center because that's not that's not good so that we have to make notes on that and advise uh, there seems to be an uh, a little bit of a, a problem there which is going to have to be dealt with so coming down we've got three steps uh, and you know you can see there's, there's a fair bit of a height differential at the front uh, between the ground levels and the actual uh, entrance we have to bear that in mind when we're mapping it out. Right, so there's not much more to be collected here. Just take a few photographs from different angles, uh, which all helps. It's all of this is, is you know, it's going to be developed. It's going to be ripped out. So, but take the photographs from different angles. That way you kind of covered. Uh, yeah, okay, get the air bricks in there. 
This is just one quick photo into the garage. All we're looking at here is the length and the width. Those are the only two measurements we need. We're not worried about the roof because it's a sloping roof and this is purely done for storage. Uh, you got a bit of solar on the top. So that's it. That's, that's all the photographs of this particular project. So now we go back. And like I say, so what I've done is I've shown you uh, the photographs we've taken and why we've taken those photographs. But I've also shown you, I've introduced you to Fast Stone. And I've shown you how easily it is to load the photographs in and how to manipulate batch process the photos. So if you wanted to separate them and say inside, outside, upstairs, downstairs, you can. But we, we generally don't bother. No need for it. They're there as a reference if we're unsure about something in the uh, when from the notes we've taken when we're drawing the plans we usually have this particular uh, folder open all the time so we might be drawing the uh, actual plans like uh, I'm looking that's not the actual project but we could be drawing the plans and we'd have this open on another on another uh, computer say or on another monitor uh, and then we'd have the notes on the desk so that that is generally how we would prepare start preparing the drawings so getting back when when we're on the measured survey uh, what's really important is um, the, the kit so we, we need to have a decent kit so what I did here is I created a folder called the architects bag and the architects bag uh, these are the essential items that you really kind of need when you go out on site and you're doing measured surveys. Now we have a selection of cameras uh, we use and um, I'll give you an example. This is probably my favorite. Uh, let me just bear with me while I get myself set up here. Uh, no, I'm not exiting. I am. I seem to have... Ah, that's what I that's what I'm sorting out right so I've got some notes here and we don't need this bit anymore so if I can just get back to here and what, what I was saying was the probably my favorite camera would be would be this one uh, that's the Nikon. It's the five. It's I think it's called a D five three hundred digital SLR camera, and the lens is nearly always eighteen to fifty five on all of them, which is kind of general for uh, general photo photography. What we don't do is we don't use widescreens uh, because widescreens would uh, change how we see the photographs. In other words, they're going to give you a fisheye look and. They're going to make looks, things look really long or really short or really big, so you definitely don't want to be using those. You can see it on the estate agents used them to make rooms look much bigger than what they actually are. And we don't use those simply uh, because um, <laughs> it's, we want to see it for what it is, not for what uh, the estate agents want it to look. So the, these are the three cameras we use mostly. Uh, yeah, as I say, it's the Nikon D5300, and then of course the Canon. The, 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 again, and these are these are uh, these are not the, these are basically entry level into SLR. The EOS A100D I've used in my bag. I've had it for at least two years. It you know it takes uh, probably about five to six hundred photographs a week on that, and. Uh, it's fabulous. Chip, chip. You just pop your chip in, make sure it's charged, and off you go. So again, uh, this is another choice that uh, some of my colleagues use. Again, the lens eighteen to fifty-five, so it's standard, but it's another Canon. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the links to all of this kit into my um, description on the video, so you're welcome to follow through and have a look. And I, I can tell you that. Uh, there's some pretty good deals on some of it uh, so you'll it, these are good these are great investments so you start with the cameras have a good look at have a good look at those three and then the, probably the most important tool uh, would be uh, the laser measure this is a Bosch one I use this one myself about 130 pound or so but really uh, fabulous tool um, 
so you always make sure you carry uh, spare batteries because they do run out of batteries. And as a backup, I also carry this one. And that's the Zamo. And this is a cheaper one. It's about £40 or so. But it basically, I've never used it, by the way, uh, because uh, it's a backup to my Bosch. And it, it's always important. And again, uh, you know, uh, if I went out on, on, you know, a survey tomorrow and for whatever reason something doesn't work, the last thing you want to do is have to go to a shop to buy a tape measure. So make sure you carry one of those in your bag because if all end, if everything fails, you've got, at least you've got a reliable backup uh, to get you out of trouble. Uh, when it comes to taking the notes, um, very standard pad, nothing special here. Holds the paper, gets the job done, but it looks smart. And this is a magnetic clip. Um, it looks or appears to be leather, which it probably isn't, but it absolutely looks fine. Um, again, on when it comes to the notes, we generally use Architect fine liner uh, pens. Uh, we like these and of course, we use these in, in the office as well for sketching and all sorts of things. So rather than buying loads of different pens, I tend to buy these. And uh, the Thule Art I like because, uh, generally speaking, they don't dry out that quick. You pay a little bit more, but at the end of the day, uh, they last longer. And of course, you've got the various heads uh, for whatever you, wh whatever you need to be drawing. Um, when it comes to the actual bag, I have something uh, similar to this. It's not actually this one, but it's basically, um, you know, it's rugged. It's, uh, it's not meant to be a thing of beauty. It's meant to be efficient. So it carries the photography uh, elements uh, kind of separate. Um, zip there so you, you keep everything nice and secure. It's well padded. You got your book here, got some water. If you want uh, and you need to, you have your tripod at the bottom. Um, and of course, you've got space for everything else from the little bits and pieces that you need. Again, other bits and pieces, absolutely always have a torch because you're into attic space, so you're under the stairs, you're hunting for stuff. Uh, every architect, everyone that goes on site to do a survey uh, will need to have a torch. And make sure you have batteries for that. Yeah, and make sure you're well charged up. So uh, what else am I looking at here? Again, absolutely essential. Always have these in your bag. You don't always have to use them, but when you, know, when you go into properties and it's got wood floor downstairs and carpets upstairs, just get them on. The clients love it, by the way. Uh, so you're looking after their property for day one. So I'm not, I'm not keen on the boot stuff, <laughs> but I do like the, uh, I, 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 it's, it's professional, yeah. I've been on uh, sites, we do a lot of party wall stuff, and I meet the surveyors, and they've got all these initials after their name, and they look fantastic, and they're charging you £180 an hour, and they don't even have uh, some blue bags, uh, and they're taking photographs with a mobile phone. How bloody professional is that? So I don't. I always like to have the proper cameras on with me on site, and it separates the men from the boys. Yeah, it, you're a, you're a professional. You've taken your years to learn your skills. Why would you go out there with a, a mobile camera and a dirty pair of trainers going, you know, to go around people's homes uh, on their carpets and so on? So yeah, have respect. Uh, get the, uh, the the shoe care kit. Uh, that's about it. That's generally, uh, apart from a few other bits and pieces in the bag, that's the stuff that you need to... These are the essential items. Uh, oh, I nearly I nearly forgot. Uh, this one. Yeah, I, I'm sure you know what this is. Yeah, of course. Vice recorder and uh, memory chip. So yeah, the Garme is the vice recorders that we use. And generally, uh, we carry those as we're popping around when we're doing the notes. Um, there's always bits and pieces that need a bit of information that you're going to forget because I might do three surveys back to back so it's really important and sometimes I won't take any notes whilst I'm on site I've got everything on the photographs I've got it on the actual um, notes that I've taken but then the Garmy um, in theory in theory you you could avoid taking any notes what you could do is you could um, use the laser and the Garmy to do the measured survey. And in effect, you measure up, you say, uh, front to back, front room, front to back, 4.8 um, 
out uh, width of alcove 1.2 floor to ceiling so do you understand you, instead of taking notes or writing notes you could in fact do it all onto device recording uh, so you might want to experiment with that but I always have one but I don't use it for taking the notes I use it for uh, a little discussion about the project what the client because I might pop out and then I sit into the car I've got two minutes and I'll say right client expressed an interest in solar panels client was interested in uh, getting an island or having uh, anthracite gray doors or whatever it is I'll make a few notes when I go back in that's generally what I use it for but of course you can feel free to use it as well use it any of these tools you know in whatever way they help you to um, you know to be as professional as possible and to get all the information you need to create really accurate drawings so that that's what we do um, so that's about it really uh, the measured survey as I say we're back um, you, 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 what you need is you need to be organized so you have the kit uh, that's important always to have the kit and then uh, when you get back to the office you need to be able to take the chips out of your camera and you don't want any problems you want to be able to load we use um, as you can see here we're using Google Drive so we use Google Drive to store everything so it's cloud I can go into any computer and log on to Google Drive uh, uh, if I take out a new computer once I install Google Drive, I'm absolutely up and running. So I can look at it online or I can look at it locally uh, or I can set up on a new computer. But basically, we're in the era where cloud technology is now uh, how, we, how we work. So all our stuff is on cloud. We're using Google Drive. And once we have all the photographs, uh, once we bring them in, then we use programs like, as I say, my favorite is Fast Stone. It's a free bit of software. Uh, and I use that then to manipulate the images as I see fit. Uh, if I want sizing, if I want to rearrange. But like I say, so we take high definition, you know, big photos so that if we need it, we can get a little bit more detail out of the photographs. So, uh, so I'll show you as an example. Now, these are pretty good photos. So you can see we can uh, we can easily uh, have a good look at what's going on there. The roof and uh, the roof is, <laughs> is is a good distance, but uh, but like I say, for most of the stuff we don't need to have this quality of photo. So what we do is we tone it down uh, by creating um, a second batch of twelve eighties, uh, and then the. The resolution isn't as good, but it's effective for being able to show us the direction of doors and um, skirtings and so on, or window placements. That's about it. Um, so based on the information I've given you, you should be able to do a measured survey reasonably accurate. You kit yourself out properly, and then uh, when you get back to the office or get back home, uh, just upload it. And, I would imagine get vast stone for yourself. It doesn't won't cost you anything. And then, um, if you don't have something like Google Drive or you're using uh, what's Microsoft one, which I've forgotten the name of it, uh, iCloud I think. But uh, again, start start organizing your photos. So we have clients, and then we have, and then the we have hundreds and hundreds, and we also have archives so once these jobs are complete and finished we then pop these clients into an archive file um, or an archive folder so that we don't have too many jobs uh, to be we don't want to be scrolling through 500 jobs to find a client uh, so we can try and keep it slimmed down so yeah we get through a lot of folders we use fast stone uh, and you've seen the kit that we use for the measured survey. So I've placed links uh, within the description for all these items. And uh, I say, because it's it's quite a bit of money, you know, you're going to spend probably about eight or nine hundred pounds just to get a little kit going or a decent kit going. But you don't always have to do it at once. And that's the nice thing. So you get yourself a decent camera. Um, next month maybe you get yourself a decent uh, laser uh, you get yourself a uh, device recorder and so on and so forth so you just build up but over a period of a few months if you're kind of skint then uh, you gradually add on but yeah you got to be professional so um, come prepared and you're always going to get good results 
So that's fine. That's it. That's all I can tell you for um, doing the measured survey and uh, the kind of kit you need and uh, the photos you take. So bear in mind, last, last, last thing I'll say is when you take the photos, don't, it's not just willy nilly taking the photos. Try to take the photos that will give you placement of elements, meaning doors, door direction, where the windows are in the wall. This one now I got the height. This one is giving me placement from the side. Um, and again, it's giving me two. I can place the two here because I can estimate that. You know, when you've always got these other elements that are going to help you measure. But it's not just taking any photos. Uh, and wherever there's steps or, you know, changes, um, odd, odd things, anything odd out of the ordinary, photograph it from every angle, high, low, left, right. Can't have, you never can never take too many photos. So anything that helps you to create accurate plans. That's it. That's all I can tell you. Uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, if you've got any comments, please feel free. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, we'll be very happy to have you on board. Uh, brilliant. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.